Hey guys, welcome back to the Can Woven Home. I'm Shara, and today we are continuing our series of design questions answered. These are questions that you guys have asked me on Instagram. I collected them and I have brought them here to YouTube and we are going to answer as many as we can in 10 minutes. Today we're gonna to be talking about layout and floor plan. We've already done accessorizing, styling, and questions about bedroom layout, bedroom decorating, bedroom everything. Okay, question of the video today is do you have an open floor plan concept? This is a 100 year old home and they didn't do open floor plans back in the day. You know, I used to not like it, but I kinda like it now. Now, because you know when you go into someone's house and all you see is the dirty kitchen? You don't see that in my house. My dirty kitchen is so far away you can't even see it if you're hanging out in here. So it's kind of easy to keep things clean because like you can hide some of your other stuff, you know? If you haven't yet, give this video a thumbs up. Leave me your comments below. What is your floor plan like? And let's jump into today's video. We got this, guys. We got this. The timer is starting in three, two, one. With skinny rectangular rooms, I recommend uh, making sure your layout matches the size of your room. So if you have a very skinny, long room, don't put like circular layouts in the middle of that. You wanna make sure that you have like your sofa that's a little bit longer with maybe one chair. And if it's a really long room, you'll probably need multiple sets of those. So do one kind of conversational area and then you could do another sitting area behind it. It's hard to answer that question without the specifics, but that's kind of the best advice I can give you, generally speaking. Okay, in my Hermosa Beach apartment, we had a long skinny room that had to fit several different purposes. I had my office, my dining room, and our living room in like 300 square feet. And it wasn't even that big of a long room, it was just, here's a room and you need to live in it and work in it and eat in it. So how do you make that work? The best way to do that is by using multiple rugs, but you don't wanna have crazy patterned rugs right next to each other. So I recommend doing a patterned rug next to maybe a more neutral kind of simple rug. Maybe if it's like a jute woven rug, something more basic, leaving maybe the main area is that could be like your big rug. <sighs> Fireplaces in the corner. They just suck, sorry. They're just not fun. I don't know what time period, maybe the 80s, that was like a thing. Honestly, if you can afford it, move it. It's a very expensive thing to do. Move it or get rid of it. If you can't do either of those things, make it very simple, like very clean and modern and kind of take the eye away from that corner fireplace. The reason I don't love them is they mess up your ability to do a proper layout in a room and they just look wonky. It's not very symmetrical to the eye. It's just like a thing shoved in the corner, but sometimes you can't move it and you can't get rid of it. So if you're gonna redo it, just make sure it's like a, a flat tile or something that's not like, doesn't draw the eye to the fireplace. It's just very simple, very clean, and your eye kind of just goes over it. Common floor plan faux pas. I'd say the number one is pushing up all of your furniture up against a wall. Now, if you have a long skinny room, you won't be able to avoid that. But if you have a big room and your natural instinct is to just like, oh, furniture goes on walls, that's how it goes. And then you have all this space in the middle of the room. Just looks kind of funky. Um, make sure that your furniture is the appropriate size for the room and for the rest of your furniture. I actually have been guilty of this using too small of side tables or nightstands appropriate to the bed itself, which if you watch our question and answer on beds, I give you the measurements for nightstands. Just making sure that your furniture is appropriately sized to the room and then also to the other furniture pieces around it. I think sofas facing each other is a great layout option. The only time that it's tricky is if you have a TV in the room, it can kind of throw things off. So I would recommend either doing two sofas, let's say you have a TV and that's your focal point, two sofas and then maybe two chairs that face the TV over here. Am I making a good diagram, kind of? And it's a good experience for someone that lives alone or maybe somebody that has one or two people, but if you have a family of people, I don't think two sofas across from each other is good if you have a TV in the room. Okay, when you have a really large area, sometimes you just have to add extra furniture just to fill the space, especially if you have large square footage home or really tall ceilings, or if you're doing a really fun project like the Airbnb I just finished, that was just like this giant, multi-purpose room that we had to make into like all these different little areas. Section off the areas with a rug. Obviously that really grounds each kind of sitting area itself. And then sometimes you just have to add extra things like an extra console or things like that. You can add like an, a little coffee nook sometimes, little fun elements that fit the room. I wouldn't put a coffee nook necessarily in a living room, but if you have a really big kitchen that's open concept to your living room, doing a cool coffee nook or bar setup would be a really fun way to use the space. Sectionals are great if you want a sectional. Not everyone likes sectionals. I love sectionals because then my husband can rub my feet when we're watching TV. And if you have separate sofas, 
You ain't rubbing your feet, you know? I think sectionals are great when the room can afford to fit it, right? If it's if it's a big, especially if it's a big room, sectionals take up a lot of space. And I also think that they're great for TV watching. I and mean, if you have like a theater room or a bonus room that you want to have just a really fluffy, comfy, Couch. I do think that it's a more casual look, so keep that in mind. As long as you have the room for it and you want your feet rubbed, go for the sectional. Here's the deal. It depends on your style and it depends on the size of the room. If you have a really small dining room or it's a pass-through dining room where you gotta have walkways, most dining rooms you need walkways all around. If that's your situation, a circle table is really good for that because you can get a small one, maybe it seats four. If you have a big dining room, it kinda just depends on your style and your preference. I think oval is making a comeback right now. Circle is great, I feel like it's really conversational, whereas rectangular is a little bit more like you talk to who's next to you at a dinner party or who's across from you. Oval is kinda like the mix of the two. Conversational area in a small space, I think you can do that very easily with a small sofa and two chairs. Heights of furniture in a living room, okay, again, it depends on your style and it depends on the size of the room. So if you are super modern and you're in a loft area space with 20 foot ceilings, it can look really cool to have low furniture, low to the ground furniture, because that's the vibe, that's the style. For me, a general rule of thumb, I like all of my sitting, like my seating heights to be the same, generally. And then I like to mix different heights as far as like side tables or little stools or things like that. That adds interest to a space, but if you have like a really low sofa and a really tall side accent chair, it's gonna feel wonky. Small circle tables are great for smaller seating areas. If you have a really large sitting area, I would do something more like a rectangle or a big circle or even a big square like I have. And then if you have kids, also I like to kind of take that into account because coffee tables can have sharp edges. We have a tufted kind of ottoman coffee table with a tray on it and that serves to be really well having a one and a half year old who's constantly climbing on it and tripping and hitting his head on the corner. <sighs> what wall do you see when you first walk into a room? Start there. Um, I would pick something, it doesn't have to match exactly. In fact, I prefer if it doesn't match exactly, but just have it be complementary to it. You know, we talk about color scheme, like make sure you have a buddy. So if you have green in the room somewhere and your dining table is like a oak color with like maybe neutral chairs or black chairs, you could bring green in in the bar stools if it also is represented in other places in the room or it doesn't have to be green, it could be a different color. But if you have wood chairs, you could do a cloth bar stool. If you have cloth chairs, you could do a metal bar stool. I think it's fun to mix up the finish. I don't think you have to match it. I think it's safe to say like one rug per sitting area or per room, unless the case where you have a really big room, you may have to layer your rugs to get a wider space. In terms of a runner going down a hallway, that's not the only place. You can also add it into a kitchen. Like maybe if you have an island, I have one in my kitchen kind of behind, between the stove and then between um, the island itself. If you're gonna do a runner in a hallway and it's a long hallway, you need to get a custom runner. Like I remember Britney Spears actually in one of her <laughs> posts, it was a hallway and there was like four, like five foot runners all next to each other. And I'm like, girl, oh, especially you, you could get a custom runner. Just get, just fill the whole hallway with a runner. Achievement unlocked. Oh, achievement unlocked, I answered them all. And under, what do I have left? <gasps> We did it. We answered all the questions. We answered all the, I knew we'd do it someday. Okay guys, that is all I have for you today. I hope that was really fun. I hope that all of your questions about layouts have been answered and you are pros. I wanted to remind you guys, we are doing a $25,000 giveaway for one lucky person at the end of this year. The way that you enter to win is by becoming a Design Sessions member. If you're a Design Sessions member, you get entered every single month you're a member, you get an extra entry between now and December. So we have like six months left, you get six entries. If you're already a Design Sessions member, you don't need to worry, you're automatically entered just by being a member. What you get is a chance to win $25,000 towards any room in your house that you wanna redo. And you get a one-time consultation with my mom and I. We talk through all the things that's going on in your space, any questions you have, any advice you need, you get a, an hour consultation. So if you join the design sessions, if you don't know what that is, it's our um, subscription program where you can watch over 100 hours of interior design content that's only on the design sessions. And it's all kinds of instruction and um, a little bit of entertaining content, my mom and I. We take on different episodes and different categories and topics. And it's just a really good time and really helpful if you guys are needing help with your spaces or you just love interior design and you wanna learn more about it. You can watch anywhere and you can cancel anytime. 
and there's a seven day free trial if you wanna just check it out. So I'm gonna link that below, go enter to win. Thank you guys for watching today. Don't forget to hit subscribe and I will see you guys next time.